Hello and welcome! In this lesson, we're going to load our documents and prepare and save the index for our company hub. Some things we will need to do, we'll need to import some packages, we will need to initiate a loader, a data loader, it's essentially an object that will allow us to read these documents. We're going to actually read the documents. Once we've initiated the loader, we can use it to read the documents. And once we've loaded those documents in memory, we can actually create an index. And finally, we're going to save the index to disk so that we can use it later. All right, so going back here, we're going to be needing a loader. The Llama Index project works with this website called Llama Hub, which lists all of the different loaders that can be used um, for Llama Index. So llamahub.ai has this big collection, an ever-growing collection of packages. You can find packages that will help you load data from many different tools, such as Airtable, Asana, Discord, and many more. But for the purpose of our knowledge uh, hub, our company hub, we're going to be using a very simple one, the file uh, loader, because this allows you to read a local directory that is going to be containing multiple files and it supports all of the most of the file formats that we would possibly need here. So the ones that we are using are all supported. And when you go to any of these loaders, you're going to find documentation as well as examples. For our file loader to work, we're going to, firstly, we're going to need to import something from the Llama index package. So from Llama index, we're going to import download loader so that we can download this specific loader that we want. So now we're going to initialize this. We're going to call this simple directory reader and we're going to use this download uh, loader function and the name of the loader that we want is simple directory. Oops, it's simple directory reader. All right, so now that we have saved that, um, we can actually go and load the different files. So we're going to type loader equals simple directory uh, reader and now we have to specify the location of these files and in the current folder we're going to press dot there is a subfolder called data so we're going to type dot slash data optionally you can add some other fields so i'll show you you can add recursive equals true if you want if you had subfolders and you wanted those to be looked at as well for files and also importantly you want to exclude hidden files because often in different operating systems um, some hidden files are created so now that we've specified where our data is we are going to save all of that in a variable called documents we're going to type loader dot load underscore data and this is just going to go through all of those files and load them all right so now that we have our files loaded we want to create our index and there are different types of index indices available and which one you'll use will depend on your particular use case. So let me just show you this real quick. In the official documentation of Llama index, there's a section here called how each index works, which gives you some visuals and, and, um, and very top level explanations of different indices. So you have list index, vector store index, a tree index, as well as a keyword table index. And uh, if you follow this project, as I have, they are constantly adding more index in, in more indexes and more things. So um, you want to make sure to check which one you're going to use. And for that, there's a section here that says Llama index use cases. So what they recommend for if you're just starting out, sort of like your first um, try, um, is just to use the, the vector store index which is the one that I am using here. And the way the vector index works in very, very broad terms is that each one of the documents that's loaded will become its own node. And then each node has what's called an embedding. Embedding is a term used in natural language processing, which is a representation in numbers of the text that's in there. So when you query this index, the query itself is also turned into an embedding. And then those numbers are compared and it will draw like the most similar nodes. And, and then this, the response is synthesized with the help of the large language model um, based on those nodes that were selected. There are 
settings as well that you can customize this index to behave in different manners. So what I would recommend is just start with something simple. And if you if it's not working the way you want, you can start to dig a bit deeper as to whether you need to customize your index or whether you need to try a different index. Cool. So with that said, we're going to import that index as well. So I'm going to type GPT simple vector index. That's the index we're going to be using. And then I'm going to create my index here by typing index equal sign GPT simple vector index. And we're going to pass the documents um, that we created earlier. Okay, so we have our documents there. And the last thing we need to do is just save this index to a disk. So I'm going to type index.save underscore to underscore disk. And we're going to give this file a name. I'm going to call it index.json. Now, um, before I run the code, and for this to actually work, as I mentioned earlier, the creation of the index does make use of the large language model, which means we need to have an OpenAI API key properly set up in our system. While the Llama Index tool can work with many different large language models, at least at the time of this recording, the default one is an OpenAI GPT model. And this, uh, um, for this to work, you need to have an environmental variable uh, named OpenAI underscore API underscore key. You can generate an OpenAI key by going to a platform dot openai.com and i will show you here once you're in platform.openai.com if you go to your own profile you, you go to view api keys and this is where you can create a new secret key uh, it's important to mention that these keys uh, if, if anybody has these keys they can make api calls at your own expense essentially because this is linked to your or your company's credit card so what you do is you create a new secret key and then you have to save that as an environmental variable. On Windows, the way to do that is by going to Advanced System Settings, and then you click Environmental Variables, and you can add that here in the system. So you will see that I already have this OpenAI API key. And the, the key that I'm using here is I'm going to deactivate it after recording because you always have to keep these keys safe, and they should never be published online in videos or in GitHub or in any sort of social media. So you create a system variable like that, click new, and then you give it the name as mentioned here. So openai underscore key, and this is where you put your secret um, API key. To add environmental variables in a Mac, you have to open a file that's shown on the screen, which should be located in your home folder. Using the command line, you can open it using Vim, a text editor, or using Visual Studio as well, or any code editor. So at the end of that file, you're going to add the following. You're going to add export OpenAI API key equals and your secret key in double quotes. Then you need to restart the terminal, Visual Studio code, or perhaps your computer to make sure that it's um, being loaded. And you can always verify that it is, in fact, declared by typing print env in the terminal. So if you do that, you should see your environmental variable. Please note that these instructions only work on Mac OS Catalina or newer. For older Macs, instead of um, the zshrc file, you have to look for the bashrc file, .bashrc file, also in your home folder and at the exact same line. So this is our code and provided that we have set up the OpenAI API key as explained in the previous lesson, uh, we should be good to go. So I'm going to press play here to run my Python code. So you can see here that 111,000 tokens were used during the creation of the index. That, at least as of today, it's approximately 20 cents of the dollar. So if I go now to, to check out my files, you're going to see there's a new file here that wasn't there before. It's called index.json. And if we look at this file, uh, you'll get an idea of, of how this is being stored. So it has created this file that has certain information about the data that's here. And you can see that it has um, the content of my knowledge base. It's pretty much all there. And this has um, added some, some numbers, which I imagine are used for querying this index. So there is um, 
a lot of data here and this is the file that is then going to be read in order to query our company hub. With that said, we're going to wrap it up for this lesson. I'd like to thank you for getting this far in the course and I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the next lesson.